Hello friends. Welcome you all to PPK portal. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. In this video, I will be covering the basics of how the historian uh, procedure is done on Delta HMI. The video which I am showing is applicable for both B series and uh, the new 100 series. Even though I am working and showing you demonstration on the BCD software. So almost similar uh, buttons and functions you can find in the new software. So this is the demo program. I will first show you how the demo program will be working in the end. So I have configured three random variables and you can see the data being logged in the upper data table and also you can see the trend of multiple graphs which are trending. You can see the axis, time axis and also the variable y axis. So let's do it from the scratch so that you can also get an idea how this is being configured. Second, let me clear everything. So, I have already configured three random variables which will be showing the random values. In your case, maybe it's a data from your PLC, some temperature value, some pressure value, whatever is there, and can be a word format or a floating format, and even it's a digital data. So, it depend on the data. So here in this case I have used three words and I have used the uh, not used the consecutive little like dollar hundred then dollar one zero two dollar one zero four and uh, I will show you how I will be configuring this. So first step is to configure the historian variable. So it is done in the um, historian buffer setup. Now you have to create a buffer and you have to remember your buffer ID. So now we are creating a buffer and you will declare here the starting address. Now when you are, you are want to do the data logging on the HMI, uh, you have to try to allocate all the data to a consecutive address range so that it will be easy to work. Now here in my case it's the internal memory, so the starting address and I have I am putting a length of 6 because I am considering $100, $100, $101, $2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I will put a default sample number of term. Now this is the trigger condition. Now trigger means uh, in what interval the data need to be saved. You have two options here. Either the trigger condition will come from PLC or it's based on timer. And you can have a custom cycle also based on the uh, some millisecond. So in this case, I am uh, putting the trigger as timer and the sampling cycle, I will put 100,000 milliseconds, that means one second. I also prefer to stamp, means to record the time and the date of the data being logged. And here, the file output, you have option to save the data in HMI or USB stick. Now, if you are putting USB disk, again, you have option to save it as a single file and save it as a multiple files also. Now, uh, in my case, I will uh, put just like save single file just for demonstration purpose. And uh, when you are selecting, sorry, when you have multiple option, you can have a trigger condition here. So that each time the trigger will come, the data will be saved. And exported as a CSV file. So in this case, I will use the HMI because I am working on the simulator. So now I have configured the buffer. Now I need to extract the data from this buffer. So this much words uh, will data in this one will be uh, regularly every second uh, saved into a, in the database. Now I press OK. Now I will configure the historical data table. So when I'm adding the data table here in its properties, it will ask for how many data you want to show. In my case, only three data is there. This is dollar 100, 102 and 104 and three of them are word data. So I will say my data field number is three. So you can see three fields appearing here. 
now there is option to draw vertical line and horizontal line for the time being i'm not opting that i will go to the properties now here you can see my buffer id is one because i have already configured only one historical buffer you can configure up to 12 i guess and in this storing buffer one you have three items already defined because i have pointed out that my data field number is three now here the length since it is a word data or the length for for all remain as one if it is your floating data you have to change it to two or double word data you have to change it to two and this is a starting point now remember from dollar hundred to dollar one zero six so dollar hundred starting position is zero dollar one zero two starting position obviously it will be two and dollar one zero four starting address is four and it's all unsigned decimal format and I can define a header I will say for example this is my data 1 so that it will be shown in your data table data 2 I will define this as my data 3 and I can even put precise uh, separate colors if you want so that data will be more visible so three colors here I can stamp the that date and time I can show the title and those customization options there you can really check for that and now if i go for the simulation let's see what's happening now see you can see the data is being logged in different colors and the time and the date is getting stamped so my first part is over now the second part is so you can see the data is being logged and it's uh, automatically getting saved to the csv file format now if you want to show the graph multiple graphs let's see how you can do it for that i will first of all call the uh, historical 10 graphs once it is called again like the same data table procedure we have to follow the procedures so here i will say my total curves is three and i will go to the details and in the detail again see you can have to show its correct buffer if you have multiple data loadings happening you have to select the corresponding buffer and here there's option to enable or disable the curve you can do it by bit from your plc or hmi or you can put one so that the curve will be always enabled in my case i'm putting all three curves are always enabled and the length is all word so it's all one and i will define the starting question again here i will define four for unsigned decimal and I will select some colors for the graph so that you can distinguish between the one another and I will also change the grid so that you can see clearly the graph data being logged. You can also define the minimum and maximum limit. I prefer to stamp the date and time also so that is available here now again I will go to the details and here I will select the scale for the y axis and if I set the scale in the display scale I will say display it on the left side you can select the minimum scale, subscale level, scale width all those parameters you can define it here now I am going with the default range and I also you can have a line for uh, showing the minimum and the maximum limits like for example in my in case the random variables will go up to 100 so I will say like uh, this 20 is like a low point so I will change it to 15 you can see now I will use the color Configure so you can see the graph being appeared, the scale being appeared on the left side. We have your three curves configured also. So let us try simulate and see what's happening. See now you can see the values being increasing accordingly. The graph is getting floated. Once it crosses this limit, the automatic graph will start scrolling. You can see the historical trend graph. And go to the previous range if you want to see and you can also export the data so this is the basics 
in the next coming upcoming videos i will be uh, showing you how to log multiple data types like word double word date or how we are together showing in the graph thank you for watching please do give me your feedback and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you